Welcome to the show. From Peterson's, I'm Taylor Sienkiewicz, and you're listening to You Have a Cool Job, a podcast highlighting those who took their profession in a unique direction and what they did to get there. On today's episode of You Have a Cool Job, we talk with Michael Dabrowski, an acupuncturist who runs his own clinic. Acupuncture is a technique that uses very small needles to stimulate the body's ability to heal itself. Originating in China, acupuncture has become more and more prevalent in the United States. Michael, I guess my first question for you then is what does your day-to-day job entail? Uh, My day-to-day job entails... um I am. So much is involved, but uh, essentially uh, showing up to clinic and uh, receiving uh, patients, either patients that have uh, um, just called in or walk-in patients or long-standing patients, and then uh, conducting an interview with them uh, to find out how they're doing, what's, what are their main health concerns, uh, and then creating a treatment plan and um, working with uh, either acupuncture needles or herbs or supplements um, and also potentially referrals for uh, mental health care or uh, blood screenings and and whatnot. So quite a lot is involved, but uh, essentially I'm working with each patient individually to find out what the root cause of their uh, health condition is and uh, using natural and alternative methods in order to help them achieve their goals. Interesting. Um, and what types of things do people usually come in to see you for? Um, I get a lot of people with back pain, back and shoulder pain, um, but also with irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's disease, um, anxiety, depression. Uh, I also get individuals who want to get pregnant or uh, who want to have fewer symptoms um, while they are pregnant because um, a lot of uh, pregnant women have morning sickness or uh, things like that. And so, yeah, uh, but it's mostly, I'd say, musculoskeletal skeletal conditions um, and um, and also some autoimmune conditions like uh, as I said like Crohn's disease or digestive problems. As for treatment plans to these ailments, Michael's approach and method is unique from what Westerners typically see in their health care. Uh, the treatment plan is unique for everybody. Like if I have 10 people coming in for a headache, um, they're not going to receive one standard treatment. There's going to be uh, 10 separate treatments um, because the the cause of why this one individual is having a headache may be completely different than somebody else. Uh, so um, I spend quite a lot of time digging into their, uh, their history, like when did the headache start? Um, what's their diet like? Like, um, what are their uh, stress habits, their work habits, and family health history, etc. Uh, and to look kind of at the big picture of what else is going on in their health that could have started um, the headaches. Hmm. So that would be what you do that's different from maybe a general doctor. Yeah, a general doctor may be looking at the headaches and um, the the first treatment of choice would be to prescribe something like Tylenol or some kind of pain reliever uh, to make the headaches go away Um, and uh, maybe to evaluate where they're coming from, whether they're stress headaches and whatnot, but that's usually much more of a cookie cutter, symptom-based approach just to treating the symptom. Uh, Now, obviously, if you're working with a good Western doctor, uh, they're going to also be asking you uh, questions to try and figure out, you know, could this potentially be something much more dangerous? But a few doctors actually have the time to actually look at that. On the contrary, acupuncture clinics are run completely differently from a doctor's office. In an acupuncture clinic, you're working with someone for a full hour, and during that time, we get to ask a lot more in-depth questions and uh, track down the root cause. A huge component of Western healthcare is pharmaceutical and off-the-shelf drugs. Michael explained that while these may treat symptoms or help temporarily, this usually does not solve a patient's problems. You're a unique individual, so you can't just have one off-the-shelf product, um, you know, treat that condition. So, you know, you may get lucky and that might help you. Um, but very often it might help you for a little bit, maybe for a week or or, what, or whatnot, but uh, the problem never goes away until it's uh, 
fully addressed. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be kind of a trend in our society in general. It's just more customization. So do you feel like there's been more of a shift towards that type of well-being and medical care? I think that's definitely happening more and more, uh, especially as um, integrative care is kind of like the new buzzword that's that's coming up uh, these days where um, patients are starting to expect a little bit more uh, uh, that doctors spend more time with them and also recommend other non-surgical or non-medication options for uh, certain conditions that they're going for. Um, I think there's definitely a trend to personalized health care. Um, rather than this kind of like cookie cutter, one treatment for everybody uh, way of doing things. So acupuncture is a great way of, of essentially personalizing your health care because you do get to spend so much time with your practitioner and get to really look at questions surrounding your health that you're not going to get a chance to look at at a regular doctor's visit. Michael said that one of the most rewarding parts of his job is seeing patients make changes in their lifestyle as they start to understand different ways that they can take care of their health and conditions. I get to see a patient uh, from week to week uh, putting in place different um, different strategies to look after themselves at home and to kind of solve their own problems. Um, very often when I provide a treatment, um, you know, the, the symptoms may go away right there and there, you know, in the session, but it's really the work that the patient does in their own lives, looking at their habits uh, and uh, looking at changes in their diet, uh, exercise routines, um, and kind of helping to coach them along the way that is really the most rewarding because that's when patients really graduate from receiving treatment to actually being in control of their own health care. And, you know, for me, having individuals have health care independence um, is very important. So that, that's really rewarding. Right. I guess, though, something that I would think about with that is somebody who would come to an alternative medicine type of clinic is probably already taking charge of their own health care. So they even have that coming into it as well. Yeah, a lot of people that come to me are actually fairly desperate. They have already gone to a um, Western medical doctor, and really, I am the last resort. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they've tried um, the different pills. Um, the doctor might be saying, oh, you're going to need surgery, or we're going to need to cut something out of you. You know, and at that point, once you do that, then, I mean, you can't put that part back. So they're looking at at anything that could potentially make a difference for them. Many patients come to Michael as a last resort, but he advises that people be proactive about treatment earlier on. I mean, it, we always hear that prevention is better than the cure, you know, and it's, it's, it's always best to seek acupuncture or other alternative health care like massage or acupressure or herbs um, much sooner. So, I mean, um, I definitely advise people that when they first notice any kind of symptom, uh, that they come in and have, have us take a look at that symptom because a symptom is usually a warning light, uh, kind of like, you know, when you get a gas light on in your car and driving down the road, uh, the gas light, you know, tells you, oh, something needs to be adjusted in this car. So, you know, I try to encourage patients to come in when they first see symptoms because then, um, well, we can fix it a lot a lot easier then rather than when it becomes chronic and something that they've been dealing with for many, many years, um, you know, then that can take much longer to address. So the earlier, the better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what is an aspect of your job that people don't think about or realize is part of being an acupuncturist? Um, you know, part of being an acupuncturist is you're wearing many hats. Not only are you a doctor um, and uh, working with, with the healthcare aspect, but you're also a business person. You are uh, running your own clinic, and so you have to think about um, marketing, uh, about business development. Um, and also, as you grow, if you get other staff, um, you have to think about managing their staff um, and uh, messaging and promotion. Uh, so you know you're kind of you're kind of it as an acupuncturist. Um, now there are other business models, like for example, it's becoming much more. Common 
common that acupuncturists will join an existing practice. So you may find an acupuncturist at a chiropractor's office or physical therapist, uh, and sometimes also in a hospital setting um, where, you know, a lot of these other aspects of the job are taken care of for you. But uh, as a sole proprietor, you're, you're pretty much it. So um, you get to set your own hours. Um, and um, work from home if you want to, um, you know, so you get flexibility. But it also means that there's a lot more jobs, uh, a lot more hats that you're wearing. While the way an acupuncturist practices is flexible, the schooling required to become a legal practitioner is not. So every acupuncturist in the U.S. has to go through a four-year uh, master's program, uh, and after they graduate with their master's degree, uh, they have to sit for national board exams, and those can usually take about a year. There's four different board exams involved. Uh, and um, uh, once you're licensed, then um, you can practice in the state that you are licensed in. So um, so there are the national uh, exam requirements, but there's also state-by-state -state specific requirements of what, uh, what your state needs to see on your transcripts um, before uh, you can practice legally in that state. To earn his master's degree, Michael attended the Institute of Taoist Education and Acupuncture in Louisville, Colorado. There, Michael participated in the four-year program, which included 3,000 hours of didactic and clinical training. Currently, there are 50 acupuncture schools in the United States that are accredited or pending accreditation by the Accreditation Commission for Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine. There's quite a lot of options. Um, I know in the state of Colorado, there were three acupuncture schools to choose from. And um, yes, um, acupuncture is usually taught in an acupuncture-specific uh, school. As for what inspired Michael to dive into the world of alternative medicine, Michael shared his personal experience with acupuncture. Um, you know, I, my former career is as a software developer and project manager. I um, was doing that for 16 years. And um, I had developed a lot of stress on the job and a lot of problems working in the corporate world. And I also didn't look after my health all that well. Um, I didn't really know how to uh, eat well or stay healthy. And um, so, yeah, life was pretty stressful. And I had heard of acupuncture being really great for stress relief. Um, and so I walked into an acupuncturist's office and, um, uh, you know, there are many different styles of acupuncture out there. This one happened to be done in a community setting. So there was like one large room with 10 chairs and there were people relaxing in the chairs and receiving acupuncture in a community room rather than a, in a one-on-one -on -one session. And I saw those people and man, they looked really relaxed and peaceful. <laughs> and so I said, well, okay, this is, uh, this looks kind of fun. Let's uh, try it. Michael was able to see results immediately after his first session. You know, that night after receiving that acupuncture treatment, I felt so much better than I had in a long time. I slept better and I woke up that next day not really feeling as stressful and um, work was not really as stressful as things that would normally trigger me and give me anxiety. Just didn't do that anymore. Um, over a period of weeks, I found it a lot easier to change different lifestyle habits and um, different food cravings I had uh, went away and I started exercising and eating better as I was working with this acupuncturist to look at all aspects of my health, not just stress relief. Um, and man, it was really a healthcare transformation for me. And so um, I wanted to offer this to other people. So that set me off on a very different career than software. Despite a seemingly 180 flip on his career, Michael still sees connections between his work in software and his work in healthcare. You know, I, I say there are similar things to software. I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, when you're dealing with uh, with computers, you're you're manipulating the operating system. You are essentially pressing buttons in order to get something to happen. And the same thing happens with the human body. Is it also runs on a operating system, and um, it's all about knowing which buttons to press. Michael said that his story is not uncommon and that many people come to acupuncture as a second career, making up a mix of acupuncture students and practitioners from all walks of life. This is reflected in different ways that people can then learn and practice acupuncture. You have um, 
quite a few different ways that you can practice acupuncture. Um, there are many styles of acupuncture that you can learn. Um, and that means that you can pretty much decide what treatment format works for you. So some people are much more Western-minded, very clinical, very scientific, um, and uh, they've come from a science background. And so they might want to work inside of a hospital setting, in an integrative setting where they're working with other doctors, uh, with chiropractors, with physical therapists or nurses. Um, side-by-side side with Western Medical um, Clinic. And so you're kind of wearing the, the white coat and uh, the stethoscope around your neck and uh, you're working in a highly clinical setting. Uh, conversely, other people might really want to run a, a, a much more relaxed uh, home-based practice where uh, you get to kind of dress however you want to because uh, you're running the show um, and you can open up much more of a spa type practice where you're integrating um, relaxation techniques, meditation, um, soft music, uh, massage into your treatment room. Uh, and so that can be for somebody who um, wants to have much more of a um, how should we say, more downtime in their clinic and a more kind of spa-based uh, treatment business model. So it really is up to you as a practitioner to invent how you want to practice. And so this job does give you a lot of flexibility. Michael was interested in acupuncture for personal reasons and was able to turn it into something he could dive into in the form of a career. We hope you're inspired by Michael's story to work in a field that captures you. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.